Saturday night, night uh, in readiness uh, for uh, Saturday's, Saturday's game. It's Saturday's game. Wales, Wales Death versus England. Death at Ponty Three. One o'clock kickoff is Saturday. One o'clock kickoff is Saturday. So you two are both. You two are both in the England Death team. Well, England Death in Wales. Am I right? Wales. Am I right? Yeah, we were twice. We were twice. First time in the Newbury. We were in the Newbury. I think it was the fourth. And me and Matt were in the team. And that's where Matt learned what he used to do. So Matt, how is that for you? How are you feeling about this career? I mean, it started off when I was at Dante, and, you know, but we were born of the earth uh, around me, we were out of the family, and we were very passionate, we went to the and, and, um, and, you know, it didn't appear to me, you know, it didn't appear to me to be able to And, um, you know, it made me very fun for that, and it made me very free now, and it was doing that, and it was my, my living career out of my living room. Brilliant. So, this weekend, this weekend, Wales, again, how would you think that's going to go? How would you think that's going to go? Well, obviously, I well, think obviously England will win. I think England will win, right, because it's, you know, right, because it's, you know, but... We have but trouble beating them. We're on the home terms. It's going to be a very hard game. It's going to be a very hard game. But I think we'll, we'll just edge it. But I will just edge it. But I don't. I'm sure they'll see it differently. Sure they'll see it differently. And there we go. And as you know, my predictions every week of these games are every week of these games are always correct. So let's wait and see. We need to get Matt out of his contract and get him playing in there again and get him back to work again. They're playing in the death. But unfortunately, his professional career still blooming. As blooming old as he is, you know, it's difficult to get him in the game. But it'll be a good game, whatever it is. I'll encourage you to go down and cover it. It'll be a great game. And it's going to be a stream game. And it's going to be a stream game. Sounds like a fantastic organisation. And moving on to another side of the game. Let's side of the couple England death for today's game. game. Death today's but game. more importantly, but, but more importantly, been doing a series so far. We've seen it quite last far. week in quite on team specific team videos. So videos. let's take a look at Bath Let's take a look at Bath study. study. I think the standards have been, been probably been higher than we we, 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 we thought. We expected to to take the delay rate of a step change, but that step change always a step up. <laughs> Thank you. 
well as uh, uh, sports as well as uh, showing the ability showing to, the ability uh, to, uh, to head, uh, combine, combine with head, having combine with ability, having so that you have the intelligence as well as the intelligence being able to be either be fast or strong or like that. So in the balance of the two, in the balance of the two, I think that shows you a better round of either whether it be in a rugby setting or in a work setting or in a work, the combination of two put two ahead of the game, two ahead of the game. Uh, 
Good evening, welcome to Wales with me, Johnny Bryan, alongside Matthew Gilbert, who's hot-footed from the pitch to the commentary box for this tie in the Box Super Rugby Round 11 between Cardiff Met University and Loughborough students. Should be an interesting tie, this one, Loughborough, who are second currently in the Box Super Rugby table. We'll go to that in a minute. Let's have a look at the two sides first of all. This is the Cardiff 15 lineup. A bit of a second-rate outfit. I'll tell you why about that shortly. Cochrane 1, Howard 2, Edridge 3, Little 4, Beloco 5, Humphrey 6, Josh Pool 7, Alan Evans 8, James Hall uh, as a 9, the fly half George Simpson at 10, Miles Morehouse 11, Josh Jones 12, Luke Normore 13, Tom Benjamin 14 and Oliver Glass 15. They're coached by Chris Davey. They have lost their talisman Alex Dombrandt and five other players to the world's under 20 squad and their big kicker Thomas Morgan also out of the game 59 points so far this season he doesn't play due to injury the Loughborough side nine of whom have scored tries in this box super rugby season they begin with Jonah Boyce Ollie Adams George Davis Henry Wilden Will Morrison Max Hill has scored three tries this season Victor Coonan, 7, Luke Frost, 8, George Dacuthy comes in at scrum half at 9, Mark Dixon, 10, Callum Watson, 11, Richie Lewis, 12, Joel Doyle, 13, Brendan Mandavenga at 14, and Will Kay is the fullback at 15, and they're coached, of course, by David Morris. The Bucks Super Rugby table looks like this right now. Four games take place tonight. We're here in Cardiff. Harbury are home to Bath. They kick off at the same time here as this game. Currently Durham and Exeter are doing battle at this moment and Durham lead by 17 points to 14 at half time as a battle between the bottom two as Leeds Beckett host Northumbria will keep abreast of across all them games this evening. Matthew, I know you're already intrigued about this one tonight but as I mentioned in that opening with the team news, Cardiff have lost six players, seven even I should say, including two of their best. How do they cope this evening? Well, I give other guys an opportunity, up, you know, to show what they can do, and you know, not a bad, not a bad night to do it. But you know, teams always lose players. I'm sure Loughborough probably missing a few as well. But you know, the challenge is for those guys coming in to step up and throw their shoes, and obviously, you know, show what they can do, and hopefully, they can get more game time for the remainder of the fixtures. Would you put Loughborough favourites? Chasing this uh, box Super Rugby title, they've got to come here for a win. But knowing that the Cardiff team is under strength, are they favourites? Yeah, I mean, I said that in the, in the pre-match build-up that I thought, you know, Loughborough obviously chasing Hartbury at the top and Cardiff might have not had a great run of fixtures, but obviously it's not an easy place to come, a bit of a, bit of a, tr bit of a journey and a bit of a crowd tonight to get behind Cardiff. So, you know, I think Cardiff will be up for it, but uh, Loughborough will know what the job they've got to do. Well, Cardiff Mets haven't beaten Loughborough in six years, interestingly enough. So this Loughborough side, big, big favourites, as the Cardiff Mets side come out onto the field in their traditional... Purple, yellow and blue colours. As Loughborough are currently in a huddle right now. And our man in the middle, just running onto the field, is from the WRU. Morgan Whitehead is our referee this evening. And as I mentioned, four games are going to be taking place at roughly the same time here. Cardiff taking on Loughborough here in the Principality. Durham are leading Exeter 17-14 at half-time and we'll keep you abreast of the other two matches going on at Harpery and at Leeds as this book Super Rugby gets towards a grandstand finish. Exciting times, Matthew. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we just stood here on the touchline. I just noticed uh, the Loughborough captain, uh, Isaac Miller, just stood on the touchline. He's obviously not involved this week. So, you know, that, like we're saying about, you know, missing key players, they obviously maybe decided to rest him or, uh, you know, he may be injured as well. So then, here we go. This is a this is a bit of a nice treat on this cold Wednesday night here in South Wales. It is a cold across the country. It's about two, three degrees here at the moment. A bit of a wind chill as well. Myself and Matthew wrapped up warm on the gantry. 
as Mark Dixon gets us underway. 80 minutes of University Rugby. Good take by Ian Etheridge of Cardiff. Now, how do the home side start here? Do they lead from the front foot? Try and put one of the title favourites under pressure as Mandefinger comes up and knocks that one forward. Not an advantage to be played here for the Welsh side as they go to touch and they are going to come back for that for that knock-on infringement. Not, not a bad start from uh, Lurk, obviously being pragmatic about going for the box kick early on, you know, they just maybe know that in a Mandy Vendor under pressure and, uh, you know, they got the knock-on. James Hall is going to be the man feeding this one for the home side. Now that's the first test of both these packs. Pretty good one from, from Cardiff. Still keep it at the back, but they know with their number eight, Alan Evans. And, and that one really set. It looked like, uh, like Cardiff might be moving forward there. Very good ball control from the eight at the back. If we, uh, at the scrum to whip round, it did very well to keep it under control. Obviously, the referee decided it's going up, but personally, I think uh, you know, the first scrum they've got the nudge on. Just to remind you, the Twitterati out there on social media, use the hashtag BoxSuperRugby, and some of the more cleaner ones will be uh, broadcast on air on, uh, in front of on our screens here. And I know some of these tweets did tickle myself and Richard Jackson last week up in Leeds. I think at one point we even got, yeah, had Snooker involved in there. Picked up though from the charge down by George Dacuti. Another scrum half picks up. Morrison. Coffee trying to dig that one out. Instead, it's been turned over by the home side. It's Josh Jones. Oliver North going over the halfway line and doing well. Just losing that there as it goes into the touch, but a little bit of a, um, a chance to see what Cardiff can do on the counter attack. They have taken the uh, line out a bit quickly and it's going to be sent downfield as Cardiff trying to launch another counter attack here. Picked up by Josh Jones. Good tackle there by Will Morrison. So with the home side with Hall. Simpson looking for touch, instead picked up by Will Kay. 59 points from his boot has come this season so far. And now the second place side. Very much counter-attacking rugby, a bit of a basketball game so far. Hasn't been much of a water of attrition, but maybe a war on the front foot. Manda Wenger loses out. And now a chance for Cardiff to see what they can do. Been breathless stuff in this first three minutes. Defence is a little bit at sixes and sevens as Oliver North gets over the 10 metre line. Hall. Humphreys. Thunderous hit. Simpson. Trying to break through. Ball's come out loose once more. Still in possession of the home side. James Hall. Evans. Again, we've got very scrappy and maybe turn over once more again. Well, still can't get a chance to catch our breath here. As now Luffer is having a go with Dixon. Spots the gap. Out on the full, back we go. <coughs> Matthew, a chance to draw breath. Exactly, a lot, lot of adventurous play there, especially from Jurg. I think they potentially missed a couple of two-on-one with a you know, half-line break and potentially could have put them on the way on, the, uh, on that far side. But um, yeah, very, very exciting, looking for that little tip-on to uh, you know, cut, cut the line speed down from Luffer. So first, true line that we'll see this evening for Sean Howard. A bit of a test for the Cardiff hooker this evening. Nearly stolen at the line-out, and it's getting a little bit scrappy. This first five minutes from both these sides. Luke Northmore. Hall. Simpson. Hall fishes it out, under pressure and 
First penalty of the evening goes the home side's way. Just looking at the way um, you know, Lopper put a lot of pressure on that line out. You know, they, they've just gone for two pod and they've started tight at the front and they've just dropped off into the middle. So, you know, obviously, Europe have looked at the space. I think they've got space in the middle and a late, a late drop just puts. Um, Put them under pressure on a you know, left, big, left player did very well to get London and unlucky not to win the ball back. Well, this is interesting just inside the own 10 metres line into the wind that we do have here this evening. And George Simpson's going to have a, a shot at goal here. Well, why not? If you're when you're playing one of the the, the league favourites, any chance you may have a get if, you, if you're in really kicking range, take it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, they're just going to be looking to build a score in you know, 3 6 9 and then obviously put more pressure on the. Uh, the opposition to, to do things they wouldn't usually do and go against their game plan. So Simpson, this to open, can't just account. Has he got the legs? Has he got the legs? Just underneath the post, he de definitely had the line, but didn't get much elevation on the ball. It didn't seem sound like he striked it too well, but you know, again, the other thing going for you know, a penalty is you get the ball back from a uh, from a drop kick. But obviously, a charge down means the luck have got an opportunity here. And begin to open up again for the away side. Now, time, now they're trying to put the Cardiff defence under real pressure. Luke Frost, to Cothy, Adams, to Cothy again goes to his right hand side. Uses Mark Dixon. Dixon intercepted though. Oliver North, and an opportunity on the far outside, Simpson, Miles Morehouse, still kept in the home side's possession with Luke Northmore, Northmore going over to the touch at the try line, and he has scored for the home team, Luke Northmore the scorer, and what a start for the home side. Yeah, lo lovely play from Morehouse, you know, breaking down the left wing, uh, uh, breaking through the tackle here, just having a look here on the replay. You know, beat, beat, beat the tackle, not not hard on the floor, but lovely little offload to keep the ball alive. And obviously, the, the players have been tucked into that breakdown, trying to, you know, Jocko play the ball down. But could he manage to keep it alive? Defence is still scrambled, and you know, very nice try. Five points to nil. So the home side, and as the Cardiff players are going back, you can, one of their coaches is, is, is really raiding the riot act to them right now. As that one just tickles over the bar, but still Simpson puts it away. Seven points to nil, the home side lead as Cardiff get the marching orders to sort their defence out. But alas, they're the ones who have the lead. Seven points to nil. Yeah, they're good, good value for their lead. You know, they've started well and um, you know, they kept the ball well. You know, made them a few li li line breaks, which will be a concern for Loughborough, but they you know, need to look at tightening their defence up. So the away side restart. Deep into the 22. This one's heading our way. And we'll just. Oh, it's a great take by Manda Wenger. Excellent it was. Really was a lot. You talk about last ditch tackles. That was a last ditch catch. And they win the penalty from it. Take them quickly by Decothy, who's looking to reassert Loughborough's authority into this game. And they're back in a tie with Henry Wilden. Tap and go. Take them quickly. Wham bam. Thank you, man. Well, a very nice play from George Decothy there. You know, he's in a Premiership club for a reason. He's a very talented player. Uh, he's, got, he's got a big future ahead of him, I think. Right, the exact response that Lopper would have been looking for. Mandavenga's take from this near touchline was magnificent, by the way. The only thing that was missing, if we look here, like Mandavenga just carried on the floor. Uh, Ducotti here looking for his winger, no there. But <laughs> no, but nobody to, there, but he still went himself. He'd had to throw the dummy and spin, but you know, if Mandavenga hadn't been in that tackle, I think he would have been a try scorer. <laughs> Henry Wilden scoring his first try of the season. Will Kay. Now looking to add to his tally of points to take him over the 60 mark with this conversion. We're just having a score from Durham, and it's good news if you're next to Van. They're now leading by 29 points to 17 up in the northeast, and that could scupper Durham's late chance of a possible title charge. And we we'll keep Exeter's going in the meantime. Okay. Sends this one on its way. Drilled beautifully in between the six. Tied game after ten minutes. It's seven apiece. Yeah, hopefully that try will uh, thatto Lapra. Um, you know they, they know they got individual brilliant at the moment, and uh, just, I think they just got to keep the ball for a bit longer and go through the phases, and you know, just hopefully they, they wear Cardiff down.
So Cardiff at restart. Luke Frost gains a number of metres in the Cardiff defence are asking for players on this near side here. That's five on three at one point at the moment, and they're still calling for men over. But the ball was knocked forward, and it will be Cardiff and the putting. They so just do the different dials, you know. When um, when Lapu kicked off, obviously you could manage to catch the ball, and uh, they've been tackled man and ball, but they're actually looking to play high field position territory for kicking it long with the box kicking trade. So obviously Lapu, while they've knocked it on, they've had a go, they've had, they've had a couple of failures. Not not they're looking to kick first, they're looking to run first and tuck first. Maybe bring the winger up and then put in kick behind, but just two different contrasting styles at the moment. That was an impressive first scrum from uh, Cardiff, and they're putting Lapa under pressure once more, but it's maybe been turned over here. And it just, just picked up. But that one's gone. Missed off for a penalty, and I don't think you heard the referee's whistle on the far side, Mr. Whitehead's. We got a, we got another score. Northumbria are leading Leeds by three points to nil. And that one's up to the goal find touch. Caught in the wind, picked up by Oliver North. Who sends this one back. A little bit of a slice off his boot. And that'll be a line out right in front of our eyes. So he's got away with that bit. The last thing you want as a forward when you want to go for the line out and drive is your kicker doesn't miss doesn't make touch, but you know, not not a good good kick return there uh, from uh, from Uric, so or Cardiff Mac. So uh, Loughborough reasonably happy with the outcome of having a line out, tucking line out, forty metres out. Ollie Adams, his first line out of the evening. Tipped away. It's a bit very, very much very scrappy affair in the line outs at the moment for both these sides. You haven't seen one clean one yet, and Cardiff have stolen it. Trying to send Manda Wenger under pressure here. And that's a loose pass from the, the number 14, and it may have come into Cardiff's hands. In fact, they won the penalty. I can't understand why that is a penalty though, because there's no rut. Manda Wenger's caught the kick through. The Europe players. Could have been offside from the kick, but they've got a penalty, so it's not them. And, uh, you know, lost. I don't know, I don't understand <laughs> it. Like, it looked like it came off a Europe player when Van der Vander did the loose pass, but a player from behind came up and picked it up. But, uh, Alas, Cardiff penalty. And one thing I must notice as well, Matthew, in the last what, five minutes or so, the wind's definitely picked up here as well, hasn't it, this evening? I think it's gone another five, six mile an hour stronger than it was at uh, a kickoff. And colder. And colder, yes. That's not going to affect the 30 lads on the field, but it will affect yeah, myself and yourself and our two cameramen above us. Simpson, this to Cardiff to reassert their authority on this tie and to take a three point lead. Set that one right this time, and straight in between the heart of the goal it goes. Ten points to three. Cardiff met lead. I mean, it's been, it's been quite even so far, don't you think, Johnny? Uh, well, it's been, been a little bit scrappy. I think is the best word to describe it. I think both teams have been making uh, making errors, and, and both teams have been making some uh, some flashes of brilliance as well. So it's very much a bit of a Bombay mix. Both teams trying to settle their way into this tie. As that one goes high into the night. Will K under it and takes it well. This is Dixon. To Coffey. Will Morrison. Penalty this time. Going Loughborough's way. Downwind. I think, I think it's going to go straight into Dixon's hands and they fancy the line out instead. Dixon sends this one on its way. And it will just creep into the 20. And a chance for Loughborough to gain some attacking momentum. Yeah, just having a look at the replay here. Definitely, the referee definitely called that right. I mean, a good jacker attempt from uh, the number seven, but number six did, did enough to stop the left player from cleaning them out where he put his hand on the floor to gain a bit more, uh, bit more power over the ball. And uh, right, right call from the referee. 
need, Lockbridge need to win a clean line out now. They haven't had a clean one yet. They've been trying to see what they do up there. Taken well by, by Whedon. Back, it's a very much a scrappy affair, but now it's been picked up by Richie Lewis. Lewis under pressure from his opposite number, Josh Jones. To Cothy, uses George Davis. To Cothy, this time to Jonah Boyce. Luckily, using the forwards to get over this game line. To Cothy again. Now going to his right hand side, uses Dixon. Dixon, nice inside pass to Joe Doyle. To Coffey. Lovely been sent back a few feet here. The Cardiff defence remains resolute, but for how long? To Coffey now to his left hand side. Dixon. Whedon looking for a second try. He said Joe Doyle's going to go over it instead. And that is the second try to the white side. Very nice play from Harry Whedon now, just to, to recognise 13 on the inside shoulder. Just brought the man out slightly. Uh, inside ball, very nice on the second row. So then, 12 points to 10. Left for lead with a relatively simple kick to come. As Joe Doyle goes over the line for the third time this season. Well, so far, Matthew, this hasn't been a war of attrition at all. It's been a very open running game of rugby. They uh, had, and you know, Loughborough uh, keeping the ball very well there for their, their phases. You know, must have kept the ball seven or eight phases there. Um, Cardiff committing a lot of people to break down, tackling at every opportunity, and you know, just leaving them a little bit short on those wide channels, which Loughborough managed to exploit there. Well, just looking at the. Uh, been fed the scores from the uh, North East as uh, deep in the second half between Durham and Exeter and I don't know what's happened to Exeter at half time because they've certainly had the right attack made of them or something of, of sorts as they now lead by 37 points to 17 I believe that one's going to be missed by Woke on the right hand side so then Luffer lead by 12 points to 10 as we nearly approach 18 minutes of this first half but keep abreast of the other scores as well. Northumbria leading by three points. No, Halfbury and Bath kick off at half past seven. A bit of a delay in that, in that kick off. Uh, I read seven o'clock on the website earlier, but uh, maybe it's maybe I could be completely wrong, or, or, or there's been that many people watching Halfbury this evening, uh, um, uh, Matt, that they have to open the floodgates, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't, uh, haven't been in a match in the last couple of days, so I'm not sure whether that changed or not. There's a happy man. Up on the gantry here. You know, don't be looking forward to the time next week when, when Loughborough host Harpery. Back in the top two. And one could argue that could be a title decided as well. <laughs> Just to remind you, the conversation. Join in on the hashtag Bucks Super Rugby. I know many of you got in touch last week to keep myself and Richard Jackson entertained. I, th I think at one point we were referring him to uh, the super player Peter Debden at one point during the game, and one of the 30 we were playing was actually uh, played snooker with uh, the former world champion many, many moons ago. But right now, none of these teams require snookers. A very open game at the moment. A thunderous tackle that was a rip by Richie Lewis of Loughborough. Still kept in kind of possession. A nice long looping pass out to Thomas Benjamin. The, the, the space is definitely there on, on, on that wing, but you know, when you throw a looping miss pass, missing like three players, it just gives the Loughborough defence, who were very narrow, the can did definitely spot the hole, but the looping pass just allowed the defence just to drift off and make the tackle. They didn't actually get any gain from having a short, short number. On fourth side from Cardiff as they go out in the fall and Loughborough will have the ball just shy of the Cardiff 22. And just three more games of Super Rugby. Four, in fact, to come over the next few weeks. Next week, a massive game 
of Loughborough as they host Harbury in the, the top two. We'll win Loughborough again the following week as they host Bath, I believe. Down the 15th, we're down at Sandy Park in Exeter. And the following week, we're up in Durham on the 22nd for the final game of the season before the playoffs or the championship games, I should say, begin in earnest. Cardiff again a lot of joy off uh, you know turnover ball. You know Loughborough made a few errors and uh, you know, Cardiff doing much to you know dive on the ball and get it get it moving and move it into space down that wing um, and making some yards that you've got to be a bit more clinical where the uh, the space is. Leeds have scored a try in Yorkshire. They lead Northampton by seven points to three as they seek their first win of the season. And they were a team who def definitely were happy under pressure last week. He was not happy defence, a, a bit of a grilling in that first half, and so Harpy put on the afterburners to uh, to get over the line in that game. So this game is a of a coin so far in this first 20 minutes. Two tries from Loughborough to Cardiff's one. Certainly keeps moving, picked up by number eight Luke Frost. We received a bit of a cold reception from the Cardiff number four, James Little. <laughs> to Cothy with the box kick, high above the footlights. I haven't even lost that one in the light. Mm. Couldn't even see the ball, could we? No, in, indeed we couldn't. It's something we have seen that uh, a few of the players have been, obviously it's been struggling with this season, but uh, up at Dulham especially, it's, it's something that they use their, their benefit against the uh, opposition. That's Tom and Benjamin. Thanks for Cardiff. That's Hall. Thunderous hit from Jonah Boyce there. It's off his opposite number. Still with the home side's possession. Hall. Little kick forward, a little chip and run. To put Will Kay under pressure. He picks up well and now finds his little run through midfield himself. Beats one player, beats a second, doesn't get past John Humphreys there. And so much so the Cardiff from the penalty. Uh, very good jockey from uh, Paul there, you know, the, he was in the sort of secondary defensive line in the kick chase and the tackle was made by those in front of him and the, the, uh, the left of fullback there just falling out his feet, it gave him a great opportunity to go on the ball and he did very well to uh, repel the clean out and uh, managed to keep him himself over the ball for the referee to award the penalty. Well, again, about 10, 15 metres from that kick, from Simpson. There's a nice little crowd of, uh, gathered here that, uh, at the Concord campus here in Cardiff. As, as somebody trying to try to fish the ball out of the, uh, the long grass behind us. And somebody has it indeed, but we now have too many balls on the pitch. Instead, Sean Howard's going to be using a fresh one instead. So let's see if we get on for the line out this time. Both sides have been a bit scrappy at the line out. And again, it's a bit, of, a bit scrappy again. Both Howard and Adams are having a bit of trouble from the line. And Lopper will have it to Cogsy. Dixon chips that one forward. Nearly lost in the lights for the Cardiff fullback. back Recovered well and now the home side in possession over the halfway line. Hall. Spots the gap towards Simpson. Simpson now on a run himself. Simpson needs to be Mandabenga. Mandabenga's too strong though. Gets him down inside the 22. But Cardiff smell blood. North. Hall. Simpson. Joshua Paul. Attacked by Mark Dixon. And friends. Simpson. Taken high up to the 22. Penalty advantage being played for the home side. They'll have a kick a goal at least. So a little freebie here coming from Simpson. And they're going to come back for that penalty. Oh, very nice break there from Simpson. I thought. No, credit to Lapa defence, they did very well, very good scramble defence, good tackle from Mangle and um, and someone got in there and played the ball down a little bit. By the time they got the ball out and looked out, actually Lapa managed to regain a full defensive line. And when the break happened, I thought 
they might have walked in on the right hand side but like I said, good ground with defence from Loughborough. By the time I looked out, the guy decided just to you know, switch play and pass it back and you know, just close it down and close it down and allow them to regain some sort of defensive shape. But obviously, um, you know, giving away a penalty gives uh, Cardiff a chance to take the lead. Richard Chiafel's just seen on Twitter, he's saying good work through Exeter Rugby. Now they want Cardiff to do them a favour. Well, I've just had the latest score coming through. Benjamin Dunham was 17 14 up at half time. Car Exeter now rallied to a 43 17 lead. So they are now running up the rails, as it were, as, and becoming t title challengers. And bear in mind, they do have a game in hand to play as well. Simpson, this to take the lead. Distance, line, both good. Cardiff lead by a point, 13-12. Well, you just uh, showed me a text from a, a friend of yours, and it's a good point, actually, that he, he just made. Loughborough are playing with the wind in this first half, and right now they're a point behind. Yeah, I mean, they, they took him away a few hours. You know, they, they, that all came off the back of pretty much losing their line. You know, the, the line-up wasn't clean, was it? And, you know, they've something they've got to get right. It's very difficult to build a platform and momentum and build if you know, the line not clean. But obviously, you know, both teams have been struggling with their line tonight. It'll be interesting to see what Loughborough do here. They've got that lovely, uh, we've seen before, that five-man line-out where the, the seven takes the ball off the off the top from the nine and passes it behind the other forward to the um, to the ten and obviously sets the back, uh, you know, free. But, you know, looking at the setup, we've got something slightly different tonight. Again, a little bit loose from the line. It's it's not pretty, but it's, it's done the job for him on this occasion. Van der Wenger picked up by Tukothi. Tukothi, nice little cheeky pass there from the lopper number nine for Keenan. And now they're off and running once more. And this is Max Hill. Max Hill going for the corner. Instead, it's going to be Luke Frostman going to go over it. Is he indeed? Mr. White is having a good look at it, they're just shy of that line. Cardiff need to stay strong. And they're trying to be there with Alan Evans. Trying to hold him up. An army of bodies on that Cardiff trial line. De Coffey shouting instructions. Dixon. Offloaded. Plenty of men over if they want to go over. Oh, the pass is too loose as well. I'm to a massive cheer of the crowd, Callum Watson. It was well over his head. I think two Callum Watsons may have even missed that one as well. Very poor execution there, you know, to finish the final pass would have been a try, but the build-up, some lovely offloading and interplay there by you know, backs and forwards, and you know, Max Hill almost getting there, but, uh, but you know, very good cover tackle from Uick and uh, to rebuild the line, but you can see here in the replay, look how narrow they are, the wingers had to bite in to help, help his uh, fellow player, then a, just a loose pass, you know, missed out the prop. No, I know back do think that props a bit of a liability out in the back line, but simple catch and pass, all that was needed, and you know, the winger probably would have been you know, in under the pace. And, of course, just to uh, as you can do, have a little break in play, if you're near the Rico Arena, Wasp v Gloucester, £10 on Sunday, the 26th of February. And also, before that game, you can see Coventry Uni against Warwick in their varsity tie. £10 for both games, what a bargain. Especially, you know, Thurman probably one of the most exciting teams in the country, and you know what, you know, the, the, the team they have, the back line they have, playing a lot of nice rugby, a lot of expansive rugby, a lot of running rugby, and uh, obviously, you know, Gloucester do fancy themselves at doing a bit of that as well. And also, if you are around this weekend, and Saturday in the Pontypridd area, it's uh, England Deaf rugby against Wales Deaf. One o'clock at Pontypridd RFC. If you can get down and support both sides, we would appreciate your time and effort. In the meantime, this game is warming up rather nicely in this cold January evening. 
the very nice kick there from James Hall of Cardiff. Um, you know, bot kick got good length on it, up, but up to the halfway line and uh, pressure on the left line lineup, which we've alluded to already, which hasn't been functioning too well. But, you know, they've got the ball back occasionally, but it's all been very loose, like tap back, not not that clean, clean ball for George Cossey. It's much much better there. So you know, they've got that strike move out the back, back inside to the winger, or the option to go wide. And uh, 13 doing kind of well, looked like a bit like a high tackle to me there. But. Well, George Doyle heads into Cardiff territory, picked up by George Davis. To Cothy, to his right hand side, Dixon. Luke Frost to Cothy again. Dixon to Callum Watson. He's got a hat trick earlier in the season, but since then he's. Scorecard has remained blank. Good pressure from Cardiff to turn the ball over as well. They're really putting one of the title favourites under pressure here and giving them a stern test. But back they come for an early infringement. I believe that was a knock on and it will be Cardiff with the put in. This is definitely a good test from a Cardiff team who have lost, what, five of their last six games? Yeah, they'll be, they'll be pretty happy and you know, with the wind uh, for the second half, you know, ten, ten more minutes of this half and uh, you know, in possession of the ball, like, like, like I said, they're still looking at that kick, kicking game, trying to turn Lepper and put pressure on them to, for Lepper to make mistake. but you know, they'll be happy with the way the, the, the game started. I've seen Cardiff a couple of times this season, but they do tend to have a period in the game where they just tend to go to sleep for about 10, 15 minutes, and, but so far they've been alert, they've been awake, and frankly, frankly they've come to the party here to give the away side a true examination. You know, on, on that point, you know, Lepper team, you know, they do have an ability, they do got the back, the pace, the offloading game, just draw two or three drives in a few minutes if you do give them a chance and go to sleep. You know, turn that scrum over, big powerful scrum, and um, you know, it's very unusual to see a Cardiff map pat driven off the ball like that. Pretty strong indeed it was. On the Lepper pack with Dixon's, with, even with the wind behind them, they not, don't fancy the kick. Instead, they fancy taking maximum points here and try and put the Cardiff backs and defence under pressure. As this wind really is again, I don't I think when you just dominate a scrum like that, you know, you're forward, uh, they've got the title that they're going to fancy going for another drive here and you know, it's certain some dominance. And uh, they put a marker down on the, for the rest of the game in the referee though that they are dominant pack. But something really gone wrong with the line out. You know, we mentioned oh, yeah. we mentioned earlier like Isaac Miller, who's actually on the bench, but you know it, been captain all year, maybe it's time to bring him on and actually thought out the line out and tidy it up. Well, that looked a little bit forward, even from where we were standing, and indeed that was the case. So it will be Luffer with the put in. Yeah, it's interesting to see uh, uh, George Ducotti with the ball now. Um, they played, played for Worcester in the European Challenge Cup a couple of weeks ago against the, the, the Russian side. You know, just managing his, his study, the long side, you know, playing a uh, you know, professional, professional sport for you know, a club that's in the Premiership. You know, obviously, you know, wants to get a degree and wants to, uh, you know, to keep trying to progress as a professional. Yeah, interesting to see. You know, this has been a great avenue, especially when this box super rugby starting this season and probably continue for many seasons to come. And they're playing top quality rugby week in, week out at university level. And clearly another avenue into the professional game for many of these lads. Dixon, Manda Wenger coming from the wing to inside now. It's time to go on the afterburners. Gets inside to the 22. To Kothi now goes with his left hand side. Uses Luke Frost. Frost sent back from whence he came. To Kothi. Dixon, inside pass, not there. Kicked forward but into the uh, uh, red basket of Joe Doyle. To Kothi. Picks up, Adams. Boyce. Lewis, into the 22, he comes. To Coffey. 22, Dixon. Running the phases are the away side right now. Patient play from them. I mean, you, can't, you can't see it from the view that you've got, but you know, Loughborough, uh, Cardiff have only got one man in the backfield, lots of space behind. I mean, it's not like Loughborough to, to kick through, but there's a lot of opportunity for the uh, the tan to hit, hit them right out of the back and put 
make Cardiff turn and put them under pressure to uh, get out of their own 22. Richard Lay, many thanks for your for getting in touch, Richard. Watching Tom Benjamin tearing it up. The Cardiff Met FC. Boxy Brewing. I taught him everything he knows. Well, well good for you, Richard. Right he's, now. Probably, he's probably played for the four. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, Matthew. You know, what, what's your Twitter handle so you can have a go at you? <laughs> Jocko told me he taught me everything I know. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. Interesting enough, a score coming in from Hartbury. They've just kicked off, and Bath have got over the line there. They lead by seven points to nil. About what, an hour away from here? Yeah, an hour or so, yeah. 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 Obviously, a bit, of a, a bit of a local rivalry, and I didn't. Pretty much the closest university for uh, Hartley Bath. Indeed, that. Well, then no doubt Bath will be right up for that one. And right now they lead by seven <laughs> points to nil over in Gloucestershire. Here in Cardiff, Will Kay looking to give Loughborough the lead as we approach our five minutes towards half time. This to take a 15 points to 13 lead. Win behind. And right in the heart of the goal, left the lead by two points with five minutes to play in this first half. Uh, very good kick. I think you know probably the right decision. They've had a quite a few penalties in the half, and you know you, you've been saying, oh, you know, where they go for the goal with the wind, you know, the distance is not going to be a problem. And they back that, they back themselves, go for a corner and drive. But where the lineup's not working, they've just got to try and you know go for points. Even if he had missed, I think it would have still been the right decision to go for pace. Just could one, they've got to take the lead, and two, the lineup's just not functioning. So they need to make the most of the penalties they get. to Coffey, finds touch well, taken quickly, Simpson, trying to use his dancing feet, said stopped in his tracks by Luke Frost, Paul, Simpson, chip over, Will K is under it, and collects it well, K, still Cave's possession as they put under pressure, back to the guard, back to the go, launch the counter attack with the number nine, James Hall, Hall finds a little bit of space on the left hand side, and uses Sean Howard, to shy the 22. Cardiff's trying to seek something for the end of this half. Sam Cochran is the man with the heavy hit. Hall, Simpson, ball pops out once more. <laughs> Jonah Boyce tries to get towards it. Instead, James Hall picks it up. John Humphreys. Three minutes to go, and we just had a full-time score coming in from the northeast. And wow, what a rampant second half for Exeter, by the way. Who have, say, yeah, from 17-14 down, have won 52 points to 17. What's that? 40, 38 unanswered points in the second half. They, well, they're leaving Durham with maximum points, and no doubt uh, grins like Cheshire cats as they as they, as they leave the northeast this evening. So, I mean, obviously, Exeter are still contenders for the, you know, the title. They put 50 on Hartby earlier this year as well. So, you know, while, while they're sitting in third, you know, they've actually they've won more games than Loughborough, but they haven't been picking up all the bonus points when, when they've been losing or you know, the five, five points when they've, when they've been getting the victory. So, um, but, you know. Yes, one thing we'll, we'll say about, you know, about Loughborough, who have lost a couple of times this season, but when, when they have lost, it's, it's 17 points to 50, uh, I think, on, on to Exeter Student Sport. Many thanks for them for getting in touch with us. Um, one thing I've noticed from Loughborough this season, they've been picking up bonus points left, right, and centre. You know, when they, if they have lost, they've still collected two points from it yeah. from, from their loss. I mean, you know, like we said, you know, they got they got a good good off play game, good offensive game. They like to score try, you know. Yeah, they scored three hundred and five points this season in over over what nine games, nine ten games. So, a big kick coming up here. Well, this is a big kick indeed for Simpson. This is probably to give Cardiff the one point lead at half time into the wind as well. As he, oh, yeah, he has got the distance, that's going to be about ten yards short. 
indeed it, that was the case. And that's going to be launched back into touch. Again, taken quickly. Well, this may be the kind of plan tonight. Not slow, slow rugby, but let's try and play some running rugby against this Loughborough side who have been obviously famed for it this season. I'm trying to say anything you could do, we can do just as good. No, I mean, two, two good long kicks from Loughborough there, you know, the last, that one there and the previous one from uh, De Costi, but you know, again, lots of length, but they're only just going out and obviously the, the, uh, the Cardiff player, they would catch it on the floor and you know, when their line not functioning, actually, if you had to take a quick throw, it's giving them you know, the ball back and allowing them to play. And obviously, they make it five yards shorter, but five yards out to touch into the stand, and you know, Lapa can, can have the ability to compete and actually disrupt that line up ball and get more benefit from you know, a very good kick. Two point game. And one of the last plays of this game, and Lapa will leave the field with a spring in their step if they can get something from here. Good offload it was there to Dixon. Switchy Lewis. Lewis has stayed strong there and has gained about a good seven, eight yards from it. Look, Frost. <coughs> Coffee. Dixon. So a switch play. And a good strong tackle, but still. It's the away team who retain possession for how long? So they try and end the half the stronger. Jonah Boyce. It's Coffee under pressure. Penalty conceded. Dixon. Oh, thunderous hit! My word! That pleased the crowd. And the ball has been turned over, in fact from that tackle. A good pass it was indeed. But they need some help here to the Cardiff line. Tom Benjamin. And it's Lopra who the ones who get the penalty. And this will be no doubt the last kick of this first half. So very, very good hit there, there on the far side. Um, you know, I was just thinking about Loughborough's attack shape. You know, they're, they're going very com confrontational. You know, with their forward through the front line, but I think they might just get the more benefit actually playing, you know, through the forward, you know, you're passing it to the forward, and you know, playing out the back. You know, that, that play we see quite a lot in, you know, in the Premiership, particularly from teams like you know Bath and Wasp, where you know the space is actually wide, and the Cardiff are defending very tight and actually hitting their forwards quite hard. Everything in the front line in front of them, you know, they almost just need to go to the forward it, and play that dummy line out yeah, the back and um, to try and move them around a bit more, try and stretch their defenders. So this bullet will be the uh, the last phase of play in this first half as Will Kate with the wind at his back. To give Loughborough a five point lead at half time. He's gonna miss on the left hand side. It's missed on the left-hand side, so it's only a two-boy game at half-time. Harbury have just scored, by the way, so that's seven each right there right now. Exeter have won by 50 points to 17 up in the northeast. Northumbria lead by 17 points to seven at half-time in Leeds. But here, Cardiff met Trail Loughborough in a very close net affair by 13 points to 15. It's hard work, but that's why, that's why you're here. We're just improving every week, and that, that's just great to see. We've got the potential there just to keep going hard, training hard every day, every session to just lift it that little bit more.
we've managed to create an environment where all the boys just love playing their rugby, love playing their sport, uh, no matter what level they are. And it's an environment where they can achieve their potential, again, not just on the rugby pitch, but within the classroom, and hopefully puts them in a good place for the rest of their life. To have someone like England here today, um, and for our boys to actually be invited to join in the session, um, is a real privilege for them. But it's also a huge accolade that Eddie Jones wants to bring them back here, you know, twice a year at the moment, so it's a, it's a huge thing. Yeah, it was Great experience, obviously. Really good yeah. fun, yeah. Oh, it was so cool. I've seen these players on TV so much. They're literally gods. The philosophy of the rugby club is, is to enable these boys to be in an environment where they can fulfil their potential, not just within rugby, but within life. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. And it's a great vehicle and a great sport to do that. A very warm welcome back to the Concord campus here at Cardiff Metropolitan University where the home side try up one of the title favourites for this box Super Rugby title, Loughborough, by 13 points to 15. Matthew Gilbert still alongside me. Matthew, your thoughts on that first half? Well, if you can describe it in one word, what would you use to describe it? Messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's exactly the same word I was going to say. It's been... Very much, much a bit of a pig's ear, I would have thought, of, of a first half because both sides have been making mistakes, but both sides are shown flashes of brilliance as well. Yeah, quite, you know, quite a bit of kicking. We spoke about kicking, quite a bit of kicking. You know, um, Cardiff obviously feel like they can put the ball up and put them under pressure with a good kick chase, which they have got in fairness to them. But 
you know, just it's just messing. Like the, the line outs haven't been good from either side really. We haven't seen a, a good drive from a line out, which is you know unusual in these games. And um, yeah, it's just quite a few, quite a few knock-ons. But both teams are trying to capital, capitalise off off those moments. And actually, we have seen a couple of good tries from the shortest half-time breaks I can recall in this box Super Rugby season. But uh, but as, uh, as as Matt as as, as Matt did say to me, that the changing rooms are closer to Newport than the pitch apparently. So uh, hence why both teams stayed out on the field. So then, it will be Simpson to restart this game. Two game at the moment. The away side leading by 15 points to 13. There's a little charge down, but it may come into the away side's favour here as they start the second half on the front foot with Luke Frost. To Cothy. Jonah Boyce, ball knocked forward. Cardiff put in. Harbury have taken the lead in their game. In Gloucestershire, and an hour away, they lead by 14 points to seven against Bath. That brings a little wry smile to my learned colleague's face to my left hand side, who's on the honours board at Harbury College when he pointed out to me when we were there a few weeks ago. Uh, that's nice to have some recognition on the board. You know. there's, quite, <laughs> there's, quite, there's quite a few other people up there that have achieved more than me, so but it's nice to be alongside them. But alas, it's these two sides that we're looking at this evening. Two-point game. Cardiff 13. Loughborough 15. <laughs> As Cardiff start with this time with Miles Morehouse. On this near near side touchline. Picked up by James Hall. We've got a fight. We've got a fight going on. Oh, got, oh, we got, oh hang on. You do have a little bit of a, a bit of a scrap going on in the far field that touch has to get involved in. And, in, and indeed, the touch judge and our referee, Mr. Morgan Whitehead, are going to have a little, a little conference to see uh, what was that about. You saw it, I didn't. I uh, just uh, didn't. I only caught the end of it. Uh, just uh, the, the two props, the, the tighter and the loose head, uh, obviously just from that scrum, disagreeing with each other. Little nine trying to break it up, you know, which is never, you know, going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, I think, I don't, you know, I don't think the, the referee or the linesman were really. We weren't really watching. No, um, we were too busy looking at the play. But I think both captains are just, just getting involved. See, listen, lads, no, no more of that, please. Let's, let, let's enjoy this game of rugby. Come on. Penalty to Cardiff. Downwind, got to go for goal. And indeed, that is the prudent choice. Well, we'll see if this wind actually does play a, a factor in this second half. Loughborough did have it in the first half, and I'm just looking at the the halfway line flag right in front of our box and it was going from left to right as we look in, but it's beginning to swirl here and everywhere now coming all directions realistically I think the wind's changed from going left to right to like bottom to top on this pitch as we look but alas Simpson this to give Cardiff the lead by a single point two minutes into this second half Not on this occasion. So then, it's as you were. You know, you've, got to, you've got to put your kicker to get that in front of the pace. Take the lead. I mean, a bit of pressure, obviously, but, you know, they get the ball back. So, well, just wanted not to get three points. They've got another chance to uh, make the most of it. And, you know, poor, poor detail there from Loughborough just to be in front of the kicker and give a, a scrum, midfield scrum, which is a great attacking opportunity for uh, Cardiff Matt. Although they, you know, their scrum's not been, they've got to you know, make, make the scrum a bit tighter. They win the last one, obviously, at number eight, picked up and played away. If they can get a more solid platform, it just gives them a little bit more um, control over what they, they want to be able to do. So apologies to everybody at home right now. We've got a couple of gremlins in the graphics computer. Well, I'll keep you abreast of the time on the score. We're about four minutes into this second half. No, then, as Matthew right, rightly said, a bit of an unforced error coming from Loughborough here to give away a scrum on the 22. And that's been wheeled round. We'll have another go at that one. As, as this biting wind hitting Cardiff begins to show its teeth. They're just looking at us, that up, you know. The, 
uh, Cardiff attacked uh, with a 3 2 with a 10 stood behind, and Loughborough are matching it man for man with their 15 stood sort of behind the three defenders, which is a bit odd. I'd expect them to be in the midfield covering the 10, but obviously De Cothy is marking uh, the play that comes to the left towards the camera. But as we said, the scrum is under pressure, but the referee has obviously seen some sort of an illegal infringement on the, uh, the props there that were having a scrap earlier and having a little bit of a push around now. Um, and, you know, Cardiff will be going to go for three points, I'd imagine. Well, indeed. Well, th this kick is a lot easier than the, the previous one that Simpson missed right in front of the posts on the 22. And this will be to give Cardiff the lead by 16 points to 15. And exactly the start that the home side would have been looking for. And And then we put in Loughborough under immense pressure to give a response. It's happy now lead by 21 points to seven there. Really start to go through the gears here. And Simpson sends this one on its way, and this time it is good. 11 points from his boot this evening. 16-15 the score. Loughborough definitely got uh, to the upper hand in, that, in the scrum, but you know, like we said, the referee's obviously seen something differently over there, much closer to the action. But you know, Cardiff had, had all the territory and all the possession so far this half, and you know they've had two opportunities to go and got one, and de deservingly take, take the lead. A one-point game. And I tell you what, the uh, the fans of Harpy and Exeter right now will be hoping that score remains the same. It's Cardiff are really coming out a bit motoring here this second half. Another penalty coming their way. Out wide. Oh, a good hit by Richie Lewis. I think, uh, I think that's a no-arm tackle. That, you know, the new directive, I think that should be a yellow card. Um, you know, the game's been quite quite uh, easy and like, easy going so far. The referee just like, let it go as uh, a bit of a hit. But... You know, really, that a no-arm tackle is with the new directive they brought in to help obviously you know, deal with concussion, which is the biggest issue at the moment. He's you you lucky not to have seen a yellow card, but the referee tried to come back for the penalty here for uh, not rolling away from the tackle. No, uh, maybe. Let's, yeah, let's have a look at it here. Sure. Just as uh, Simpson's going to launch it into touch, so you tell me here, mate. Is that a yellow card? No, uh, that's all right on the play, mate. You know, it does, it just, he does hit him with his arm there, but obviously the, the impact of the hit knocked the guy away and it didn't give him a chance to wrap his arm. So let's see if uh, Cardiff can have sorted their line-out issues out at half-time. Um, obviously gone for a five-man, which makes it you know, harder to defend. Slightly easier to... Uh, you know, they gone for a four-man, sorry. Howard from the line. This time it is good. Picked up by Hall. Paul, Simpson, Morehouse, good offload there from Oliver North. Luke Northmore is the man who caught it in possession. No, Paul, Simpson, another penalty, and looks like there's going to be a card coming out here as well. <coughs> Indeed it is, number four, Henry Wilden has, Whedon has scored the first try for Loughborough is going to be spending the next 10 minutes in the bin. Penalty to Cardiff, and now maybe the momentum, momentum going is going their way indeed. So it's a fair call from the ref, though. We, we've seen sort of three or four uh, penalties at the breakdown like, into session, really, in the half. Loughborough can't, you know, can't get the ball, can't keep hold of it. And, um, you know, just pressure, wind, momentum, home crowd, everything just going in Cardiff's favour at the moment. They, they're not just over, you know. Yes, Essentially, our prediction before the game were, were wrong. <laughs> be the first, wouldn't be the first time there, Matt, in all fairness. Simpson's going from the tee once more. One from two in the second half. This is roughly where he missed the first one from in the second half, but this is now to give him a little bit of breathing space and to give him a four-point advantage. Roughly, what, 10, 11 minutes in this second half. Simpson, to go four clear.
He's got the distance, has he got the line right this time? He hasn't missed it on the right-hand side. So still a one-point game. So still one point of the difference, about 11 minutes into this second half. And I tell you what, Matt, if Simpson would have got those other two, they'd be leading by seven right now. It's Cardiff are the ones who have come out the stronger in this second half. Cardiff with that one-man advantage as well. Ian Etheridge. Josh Jones up towards the halfway line. Benjamin Williams is on the field, acting scrum half. There's one or two changes that have been made. for Cardiff as they bring in the cavalry a little bit early in the second half but obviously sensing something Williams Oliver North chips this one forward Mandavenga is back for Lopra Will Kay now back to Mandavenga with his left boot launches this one downfield Simpson <laughs> picks it up from over his shoulder Morehouse Williams, Simpson, Ian Etheridge, Ben Williams, now fishes this one out. Ball has been knocked forward, it will be Loughborough put in, but they are, one of the forwards is in the bin right now, so it will be interesting to see what they do here, but it's, um, this kind of the ones who got the wins at their, in their sails at the minute. No, they have, and you know what we spoke about half time about Loughborough um, maybe trying to play out, out the back of those forwards. Actually, you know, Cardiff have come out with that um, sort of game plan and mindset this half. You know, the first half very attritional going forward, but actually now they're, they're sort of looking to play behind those forwards and you know make Loughborough defend with more width and make that winger come up to you know potentially open up that backfield space that they can exploit with their kicking game that they've been using all, all game. Well, our referee just jotting something down in his notebook. He's going to have a scrum down now on the 10 metre line. Just remind you, of course, here on social media, use the hashtag Box Super Rugby. And no doubt we'll be putting one or two on the, on the screen as. Harbury uh, have just basically gone into fifth gear with the looks of things against Bath. 28 points to seven, they now lead. And that's four tries, so they've already picked up, picked up the bonus points, and there's not even half time in that game. How do Loughborough respond here? They're only a point down, but there's still a man down, just to remind you. To Cothy, Dixon. Take two, we'll try that one again. To Gothy. Penalty coming off for his way. And they're gonna have that right now. Oh dear, oh dearie me. Well, did he tap it? It looks like he did, it's been knocked forward. Well, and when you know it's not going your night, it's not going your night. You know, they just need to regain some structure and you know, just have the ball for a bit, don't they? Um double look. Bit of pressure at the right down. Yeah, it is very unusual to do that. You always wonder whether they've been infringed on the floor. Actually, just he's just taking it a bit too quickly. You know, sort of speed of thought they were taking his uh, cognitive ability. <laughs> <laughs> and just it just invites more pressure onto them. You know, still in, still defending in their own half, man down in the forward. They have been dominant at some time, but. Uh, you know, they'll be looking for another penalty, I think. And if they can uh, have another kick at goal to go to the corner, that would be uh, well, that's what the a surgeon, good outcome. Well, that's what they said for right now. They've only picked up three points from this one man advantage the last few minutes. 
could see how, na how narrow they are. I mean, can't see it on the wide on the wide picture. You'd be able to see it. Yeah, really not. So there's some of numbers on this near left-hand side, but they're all coming back now to uh, to stop that attack on that particular flank. A little chip forward. How's the bounce? A little bit awkward for Callum Watson. And put under pressure there by Oliver North. Watson, good hands. Now it's the Cardiff uh, players who are caught in from men over on that far right inside. And we've got a player who's hurt his arm, but looks the thing. That's Josh Jones, I think, who's, who's hurt himself. And so right down both teams are down to 14 at the minute. Jones is, seems in particular pain, but he's run, he seems to be running it off. To go back into the line. Lopper off to the halfway line. And again, it's gone a bit scrappy and messy and turned over, picked up by Williams. Tom Benjamin. Williams trying to fish this one out. Humphreys. Well, right. Card have been sent backwards at the minute from this Lupper defence. They're up near the halfway line a few phases ago, and now they're inside their own 10 metre line. Still one point game, just to remind you. We're approaching what the hour mark. <laughs> now going slow and circumspect. Williams' option is only to have the kick. Manda Venga is the man under it. Trying to launch the counter attack and trying to. Maybe find him a way to put him into touch. He remains inside the battlefield. It's a huge backfield base. You know, Loughborough got an opportunity to either very narrow defence or a lot of lot of base in the backfield due to the number of uh, Yurka com committing to the ruck. Well, Kay's the man in. Kay is the man going to be in, and they're going to go over. Well, it's been scrappy. It's been loose. It's been messy. But Lupper will not care. They're over, and now they have the lead. So, uh, very, very good play. You know, going back to the the kick from uh, from from Cardiff. A very good kick trade. Manga Manga done very well there to get past that kick trade, and uh, you know, a few, a few missed tackles, a couple of nice offloads, like the um, the play earlier in the, the first half, and um, you know they'll be relieved that they've got you know a foot back in the game, and um, you know you know killed the momentum of uh, Cardiff a bit. Just looking at uh, a few few players before as well, I don't, I don't think there's necessarily too much communication going on that left the back line. Cause Cardiff were defending in the 12-13 channel from five play with two props next to each other, which is almost like the worst scenario you can get on the rugby pitch. And you know they end up ca carrying back and forward, and uh, they they lost the ball. With. If if it had been communicated out wide, they could have had some nice footwork and two props that have got a lot of work to do and they would expect a, a classy back to, to be able to unlock them and create holes but you know, they'll be happy with that and the conversion will make a difference. Well, Dylan Dido will give us a six point advantage looking at the uh, lot of captain Isaac Miller in front of us here, they've been pacing up and down here like a, like a gazelle in it with every, with every play in all fairness I think he was, if he was running in a straight line I think he'd end up in Bristol the way he's been pacing up and down this field this to go six clear, and over it goes from the boot of K. Twelve points from his boot this evening. And now the score is 22 points to 16 in Loughborough's favour. With around 20 minutes or so to go, it's only approximate from us because our graphics are down currently, and we're looking at the the clock in the uh, corner of the stadium which is also stopped so we've gone on the referee's whistle whenever that goes but roughly 20 minutes have gone in this second half six points of difference and we've just got a score in Leeds trial Northumbria by 10 points to 17 and Harbury at 28 points to 7 up against Bath over in Gloucestershire six points the difference here Mark Dixon lost that one in the flight Picked up instead by Oliver North towards the halfway line. 
Again. Very, very scrappy affair this has been most of the evening between these two sides. And it will be Cardiff who will have the put in. Not too sure why he's given a scrum there. I mean, it looked like a fair jacket attempt by the winger at Loughborough. Um, but then the ball would come free. Obviously, the, the Loughborough winger that was doing the jacket didn't actually come away with the ball. So maybe he just thought it was too many bodies on the floor and the ball was dead. Yes, that 27 score <laughs> over a half at Harbury against Bath is a half time score. They kicked up at half past seven this evening. Williams collects. Out to wide to uh, Jordan Roberts on the field for Cardiff. Ball may have been turned over, it has been indeed. Picked up by number 17, Seb Brownhill for on for Loughborough. Dixon. Good tackle there from Callum Lynch. Tom from Ryan Spriggs, I do beg your pardon. For Cardiff. Dixon. Kick low. But back they come for a penalty and looks like somebody could be in a bit of bother here. For Cardiff. I'm going to give you credit you there I every think, time. Uh, just but they've got a really awful. Can you tune in on that occasion because I'm going to have to talk over you. Okay. Give me a little bit of time. Yeah, fuck yeah. Charge more than anything else. Thanks to the back track. It's a good question. Thank you very much. So, uh, a chance for Lopper to have done their lead into the wind. Yeah, into the wind. It's a little bit more of a difficult kick, this, for Will K. Inside the 10 metre line. You'll come up 40 metres or so into the wind, which has gone down a little bit. You can still feel it up here on the on our on our gantry. And Matthew, you didn't bring any gloves this evening. I don't know about your hands, it must be freezing. Uh, a little bit chilly, and I've just chucked my water bottle. It's not quite out there yet. But, um, <laughs> no, it's not, it's, it's not too bad. When the wind died away, it's, it's not too bad. Yeah, well, when it comes back, it's, a, it's, it's really biting indeed. Okay. This to go. This to go nine clear as the ball just comes down. We've played what twenty-five or so minutes in this in this second half. But this to give the away side a cushion as we hand into the towards the last 15 minutes of this tie. He's hit it low, and that's not going to get there. And he missed on the left-hand side, so still a six-point game. It's kind of send it downfield. Manda Wenger's the man under it. And he's dropped it, much to the delight of the partisan crowd on the far side. The rare error there from Manda Wenger. He's been, he's been good all night under that high ball and you know, on, on receiving kicks. And just a little bit of distraction. Maybe he had the, the crowd getting on his back. He knew they were there breathing on him with the cider breath. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the, um, you know, just felt a bit of pressure on men and hour. I'm not sure if it's cider on, in these parts, I don't, I don't think. I, th I think it's just good old beer, I think, uh, in South Wales. Oh, I think it's cider in your part of the world, I believe. Very true. Good collection from the Cardiff line. Now, can they find a way to get back into this tank? Only six behind, to remind you. Converted try is good enough to give them the lead. 16 points to 22, they try it. With around 15 or so minutes left to play. Williams. Simpson. Look for colour for men over on that, on that far side. Williams. Northmore. Loughborough defence remaining strong right now. There's just the extra gear that they need just to get over the line and set up that tie against Harbury next week. The ball has been turned over, and I think they're going to get, get a penalty here. 
and maybe, Matt, this is what I just mentioned, this is the extra gear that Loughborough may have that might see them over here. Yeah, they're definitely getting you know, more, more joy at the breakdown from the referee and, um, you know, as we spoke earlier about Car Cardiff, uh, playing a bit more expansive and actually maybe neglecting those breakdowns a little bit like they did in the first half. Obviously in the first half, they had a lot tighter game, hitting forward, you know, in group, to, you know, three, four. So when, when you're carrying, you've got those two guys in support. Now they're playing with a bit more expansive and a bit more wit. They, they've got more sort of one, one off runners and they haven't got the close support, so luckily they're able to go for those. Um, you know, jackal opportunities. Um, on, you know, they've had a couple of penalties in the last last few minutes in that. So, um, you know, they look like they're going to the corner here because of the, the wind. And um, you know, if they can get that, that line out, functioning we've spoken about all night, then uh, they'll look to drive this and that's, you know, back to full complement. I think you might be right here. I think I think Dixon's got the ball here and, and going for the corner. And I'm just doing my maths here, knowing that Harbury have already got their four tries and. If you're a betting man, you'd argue they're about 99% sure that they're probably going to get that result against Bath. Loughborough fancy their chances here. Is that, that, is, but that's not going to go out, though. Well, I was going to say, they're looking for the fourth try themselves to pick up the bonus points. So, so it could be, if the result remains the same, if my maths is right, I think Harbury will go six points clear at the top of the box Super Rugby table this evening should the results remain the same. I mean, ultimately it will come down to the, the, the knockout and obviously first player and eighth, which you know, looking at the table that's obviously the benefit of finishing top. But I, I do believe I do believe that, that I I have had it on authority that I believe there may be a trophy of sorts or a shield to the Box Super Rugby League winners. So mm -hmm. it's a very good drive here. I mean if only he had got his kick out on the five metre line rather than having to the kick return to give them a 22 metre line out. And they've got another penalty coming as well. Now, I think our referee has, uh, has may have had enough here with uh, with one or two of the Cardiff players, uh, their discipline in this in this half. Is he going to go for the card? No, he's not. Instead, we're going to carry on. Now this time, Dixon is going to go for the corner as they do seek out this fourth try. I mean, he's much closer to the touchline now. He's going to definitely get this to a five-meter <laughs> line out, and it, it just—it's just a simple thing that like we spoke earlier. Ricardo had the same thing when they missed touch, but then they got a line out obviously 20 meters further you know, away from the try line than they would have liked. But you know, left for a very good drive from that 22-meter line out, and uh, it looked like from the angle here, it looked like he actually kicked it dead. But it didn't feel like that. Well, that, sure. that white post is, is, not, is not a flag. It just, uh, it yeah. just seemed to put, yeah, we couldn't it's see the flag the right part, the, yeah. But it did confuse me from this angle. It looked like he got it to the left, the right hand side of that, and he kicked it dead. But yes, I can see the yellow flag now. <laughs> it's my hearing that's bad, not my eyesight. Not your eyesight, no. So we, we, no, based on that last line, we're looking at another catch and driver and, and a try. Callum Lynch. Is the man he takes it picked up, juggled by Wilden, who's back on the field. He's back on the wee field for a while, I should say. Five meters out. To Cothing surveys his options, uses Lynch. Dixon. Manda Wenger. Meter short. To Cothing. Dixon. Again, only inches away from the fourth try, and maybe to seal the deal here. It's going to be Wilder. To Coffey. It's a Jared Leet on the field for Lopra. It's Coffey once more. McFrost. To Coffey. Cardiff defence remains strong. Dixon, out from the far wide, Will K. K, good offload there to Richie Lewis. But Cardiff are sending them backwards. To Cothy. Seb Brownhill. K. Did well to retain possession. Jared Leet. Dixon. Dixon. Out wide, Adam, it's not there. A 
That's twice now we've seen that big looping pass just going straight into touch. But you know, fair play to Cardiff. You know, some courageous defence there. They did very well to uh, to get back from Mangda Mangda's run and uh, you know, not lost the battle through all the way back to the 22. Uh, Ma- Mangda Mangda down injured from that carry. He's already got sort of quite a heavily taped hamstring and calf. And uh, the number eight seems to be struggling with cramp as well, which that, that pass was intended to. Maybe he'd got it. I don't think he would actually run anywhere. And uh, there's a few men scattered on the floor now. It's a bit of, a bit of the walking wounded out there right now. And just been uh, while I've been flown, there's been a red card up in Northumbria, I believe, Leeds, Northumbria, for a deliberate knock on. Red card, I believe. Yes, uh, thumbs up. I've just been told by my producers. So Leeds. We're chasing that game. 10 17 the score, I believe, right now. As Northumbria are down to 14. And that approaches, well, that's that. That'll be near the end of that game as well. So, as Leeds trying to find, get their first result of the season. A red card for deliberate knock on, very unusual. Normally, just a yellow card, maybe a second yellow. Or maybe a second yellow, yes. Or maybe stop the third and try, but normally that would just be a yellow card and a penalty try. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Second that yellow, we've even rather be informed. There we go. The Cardiff just lost their line out again, and just, you know, just more pressure, something they don't need when they're, they're now chasing the game. Yes, and they're still in their 22. As Loughborough are trying to find a second try, a fourth try, I should say, to pick up that bonus point. Dixon, Lewis, Lewis with the offload to Callum Watson. Is he over? Just is he over? And he is indeed. Exactly what Loughborough were looking for. They now go 11 points clear, four tries to their nine this evening. Lovely Bring play. on Harpery in seven nights from now. A lovely powerful line from Lewis there, and a you know, nice great offload out the back, and you know, a great, great support from the try square. But, you know, Cardiff been defending really well, been putting in some good tackles, but, you know, they're so long you can keep putting up tackles, and it does wear you down. It, does, you know, it is hard work defending, and, you know, they could have. Well, if they'd run their own line out, they'd clean their line, then uh, they wouldn't have been inviting that pressure. But, you know, Lapper have been you know, down there for the last five, ten minutes, putting uh, you know, a lot of big carries and kind of making a lot of big hit. But ultimately, you're going to wear the team down and you will find holes. And a uh, you know, nice, nice bit of uh, brilliance from, from Lewis there with the offload. Callum Watto with his fourth try of the season. Well, Kay, looking to add to his tally of 12 points this evening. But more importantly, this for Lufford to go 13 points clear into the heart of the goal. It goes 29 points to 16. Lufford lead. And we've got about five minutes or so to go. And so much so that with that try and kick, they go to the exits here in South Wales. Do the crowd, they're, they're heading towards the warmth and maybe a beer or two. Yeah, right. right uh you know, we talked about the first half, we thought Cardiff were very good value and um, you know, those players that stepped up in replacement of those injured players and those players in the worst 20 squad, but they may be the only I've been impressed. I, I, th- I think, uh, in all fairness, the two or three times I've seen Cardiff this season, this is the best I've seen them play. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, those guys are taking a chance, but you know, if you're not used to playing in you know, a 60, 80 minutes every, every week, then you know, the second half is always hard work. We've got another nice boat coming on here. Alda Evans with the little starting run. Northmore. <coughs> Good hit there for Davis and Whedon. And again, George Davis. Williams. Picked up by Ryan Spriggs. If you're on the Box Super Rugby hashtag right now, give us your nominees for Man of the Match. From what you've seen this evening, I'll be asking my learned colleague to my left his thoughts shortly. As Watson picks it up on the bounce. And Watson gains a number of yards there. And maybe just trying to set up an, another try for the away side as they try and finish this tie on the front foot. 
another nice offload from Lewis there, just giving them that extra few metres down the game line, but one offload too many, they, they've lost the ball, but they've got, they've got the ball back again. Just got to uh, try and clean it up a bit, you know, make those 50-50s have just got to be more, more accurate. Well, there's a lot of, you know, they're struggling, thing along, they're taking, you know, the players get off the floor, they're, you know, holding their hamstrings in their cars, there's obviously a little feeling, feeling it tonight, maybe not having, having very good Christmas and not <laughs> done too much exercise. Well, as we do have a little break in play, as the uh, the ball just goes dead, and we have a line of one or two players receiving some treatment. Uh, Matthew, your man of the match, please. Who's impressed you this evening? With an ooh, just goes across your face. Ooh, that's yeah. It's well, you know, I thought you know, Richie Lewis carried very well for last You know, nice offload, got them going forward over the game line. Obviously, that last drive, you know, was started by him as well. So been 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 pretty impressed with him. Not not called a try, but and then. Obviously, Will Kane and Simpson traded, traded points. Both Simpson missed a few, but and and, and, and had K, but both still kept their, their team the chipping away at the points. So uh, yeah, there's a few, a, a bit of time yet to, for someone to be a match winner. <laughs> well, it's 13 point difference right now. We've got what five or so minutes left to play. Doyle. Isaac Miller. Now on the field. Oh, hello. Like a no one tackle there. Miller. Adams. Watson. Watson spots the gap. Watson looking for his second try. Instead, hands it off to Chris Davis, who is over for Loughborough's fifth try. Game, set, and match. A very nice play from Callum, Callum Watson, though. You know, picked up a bit of a loose ball in the backfield. Not much on. Nice bit of footwork, but great, great line there from uh, Chris Davis to uh, support him. And um, you know, I guess. Number 21 on his back, a substitute nine, very, very good uh, line from a, a nine there, you know, always supporting that inside shoulder, looking for the the last pass to score the try. And uh, like you said, I think that, that the game. Looking, let's look ahead to seven days from now when Liss Loughborough side host Harbury, top two doing battle. You know, what could argue could be a pivotal moments of where this Bucks Super Rugby title goes this season. You've seen a lot of Harpery this, this year as one of their alumni and and, and uh, you've been down there a lot. What have you seen from this side from Loughborough and Harpery? We haven't played each other this season. Would Harpery be worried from what, after what they've seen tonight? Uh, no, they've got, they got a nice you know, balance in their game. You know, they, they, they've got very good forwards that carry, carry very hard. You know, we're just doing that like that Miller charging through the middle and uh, they've got them back that can do the you know, do some damage like Watson just done, and um, you know obviously Harbury got a very similar. Very sim it's going to be you know match of you know the, the same style, and um, yeah, well you can guarantee this way it's not going to be a a, a, a nine six on penalties. Is it? No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. And you know obviously at Loughborough on that on that artificial surface, you know maybe maybe just gives Loughborough a little bit of an advantage. I, you know used to playing on that surface and you know, used to making tackles on that sort of surface. Well, as we're getting towards the dying embers of this time now, 20 points is now the difference as Loughborough lead by 36 points to 16. 19 on 19 here as Connor Collins gets tackled by Gerard Leet. But then maybe they can finish the stronger here, Benjamin Williams. Just a lot of faith width here. They just go through the hand there, maybe the dummy runner. Looking out of space. Instead, Ooh. interception. And good hands. Oh, I said good hands nearly from Dixon as uh, Miller just tapped it forward. Williams. <laughs> Etheridge. Unfortunate error from. Oliver North. I think we have scrum down and it's going to be a Cardiff ball. 
Harpy lead by 33 points to 7. Now they've been put a fifth try. In its bar. Yeah, they're just looking at this game, they card if I'm giving up, you know, still, still trying to play, still, still want to yes. score tries and just you know, had another opportunity there to just take, take the width and, you know, there were a lot of space in the left, but they just been very flat and very lateral. They knew where the space was, but everyone's just standing, they're just passing the ball across the line. No no decoy runners to hold, hold defenders in to make it easier for them to, to, take, that, to take that space on the outside and... Um, yeah, maybe, maybe you know, going back to what we said about um, you know the, the, the number of players missing. Maybe that you know there's not that fluidity, and uh, you know the player they've got on the pitch. Just also know they've gone uncontested scrums as well. Yeah, it's very really interesting indeed. Are you in? Uh, are you in Loughborough next week? Not sure <laughs> You're yet. not sure yet. He has on the call. Well, 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 well thankfully that Loughborough they have a stand there, so so any any wind we, we, we get hidden from there. Oh, I, I've just been told by our exec producer, but I'm, I'm on the gantry next week. <laughs> it's opposite. <laughs> oh, it's opposite, oh, opposite the stand. Well, first game, first game we would we were in the stand. Oh, thank, thank you. Very, I, I'm looking forward to that now. <laughs> he said he said that to me with a with a, with a grin like a Cheshire cat. Uh, because no, it's going to be on the 3G. On the, on the 3G pitch as well. Uh, you know, that's, what, that, that's what just turned a minute ago. I think you know, Loughborough would just fancy themselves having a bit of advantage on that on that artificial surface that they're used to playing on. You know, a much quicker game to play. Well, maybe home advantage may come their way. They're going to be five points behind Harpreet. That is for sure. Next week, and we'll keep your eye on Exeter as well because they've got that one game in hand as well. So, fucking go no one way or the other. Bear in mind, Exeter have to go to Harpery as well, so that they may have a, a say on how this rugby goes. Box up with rugby title goes, and there's an opportunity here and they to go over. But instead, there was a little forward pass there, so Luke Northmore can't capitalise, and that is the end of the tie. Matthew, before you leave, your final thoughts. Uh, good, you know, good entertaining game. I thought, and you know, both, both teams. The uh, second half is you know, almost different game to the first half. First half was a lot of, a lot of kicking, a lot of almost tactical work and attritional work in the front five, and opened it up a bit. Second half, and uh, you know, I thought, you know, well, Cardiff defensive, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of big hits going, and they're very courageous, but you know, just some clinical errors, and it just invites more pressure. And Lapa, you know. Just fair, fair play, they, they scored a nice try and uh, full, fully deserved their, their victory. Indeed they did. Loughborough have taken maximum points here in South Wales as they are beaten Cardiff by 36 points to 16. So then, let's have a look at the tries in this tie. Six in all we've seen. Five from Loughborough, one from Cardiff. And it was Cardiff who opened the scoring with Luke Northmore. <coughs> Good offload that was indeed from Miles Morehouse. And keep your eye on number 13, Northmore, who spots the gap opening up. And that was early in the, in the first half, about five or six minutes in. Then the response took less than two minutes. As Brendan Mandavenga danced his many way to create the opening here as Dakuti took it quickly, spun around on a sixpence, and the offload was good to Henry Whedon. They got over the line, and that was an instant response from the away side. And then try number two. Again, we're 15, 16 minutes in the, the first half. Good inside pass to Joe Doyle who got past James Hall to get over the line. But then Cardiff did get back into the tie. A couple of penalties here. Three penalties came from George Simpson's boot, in fact, in this tie. 
And at one point they did have the lead to 16 points to 15, but then Lupra started to get through the gears and they found that extra gear, especially towards the last quarter of the tie. As Will Kay, with 14 points coming from him today, including nine from his boot, he got over with a third try. Try number four came from the number 11, Callum Watson, to score his fourth try of the season. Spotted by our referee, Morgan Whitehead. And then the, the final try just coming towards the end of the half. And the, at the end of the tie was scored by Chris Davis. Davis, the number 21, coming onto the field. And no doubt enjoying his little cameo to score one of his first tries of the season. Watson with, with the work and Davis polished, polished it off. So then, that is where we stand. Loughborough pick up maximum points. They have defeated Cardiff by 36 points to 16. And Matthew Gilbert has got one of the Loughborough players alongside him. So I'm just here with the, uh, the Loughborough captain just to gather his thought, thoughts on the game. So um, obviously you must be happy with that. The, you know, obviously the final result, close first half and the second half, how do you feel? Yeah, really close first half. They were, uh, they were really aggressive, really good as you expect. Uh, in the second half, I really thought our defence stepped up was the big change. Uh, and when we put pressure on them in defence, a couple of mistakes, and we've got the uh, the back three to score from that. Yeah, I mean the game did open up. I thought you know Cardiff defence was you know, quite courageous at times. And uh, what 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 changed the second half? What did you talk about at half time? Half time, we just talked about sticking to our patterns a bit more depth. They were bringing such a lot of line speed and making those dominant collisions that we knew we had to give ourselves a couple of metres back behind the gain line just to give ourselves a bit of time. Uh, and I thought we did that a lot. I thought. Uh, I thought Richie was our uh, 12 was absolutely outstanding, carrying the ball over the gain line, getting the offloads away, uh, and the pack gave us go forward ball, which uh, really helps. Yeah, I mean, I've done in the commentary. I thought he was uh, you know, my man of the match, to be honest. I, you know, carried hard for you guys. Didn't got those offloads in for the try. You know, the crucial try that made gave a bit of uh, gap in you know between the scoreboard. And uh, you know, I thought you guys good value for your win. You must uh, you must be looking forward to next week top of table clash against Hartbury. Yeah, we've been looking forward to Hartbury since they went on that sort of nine game streak at the start of the season. We're uh, we're really looking forward to next week. Um, and if we, if we carry on playing like that, I mean, the first game back after Christmas, a bit of a burn on the lungs, getting back to playing with boys, uh, and it's been fantastic. And we're looking forward to next week, really get back stuck into them uh, at our place. We'll see you there next week. Yeah, All absolutely. the best. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. We're just going to have a chat with uh, Dave Morris now, the, uh, the, the victorious coach from Loughborough. Matt. Hi, Dave. How are you? Oh, yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, you must be uh, pleased with the, the final result, given that the, the first half was quite, quite tight. Yeah, I think, um, you know, outcome-wise, uh, a win and a... You know, five point. That's exactly what we want. Uh, I thought we were really rusty in in, in the first half. Um, you know, for a lot of those guys, I haven't played before Christmas, and I think it showed out there. We lost a lot of ball in in contact, and therefore couldn't really go through the phases and, and find our fluency. So, uh, yeah, pretty disappointed with with that. But uh, huge credit to our lads in, in terms of the character they showed in in the second half. And uh, you know, we have to recognise as well, Cardiff Met got a lot of players with Wales under 20s this this week, etc. Et so. You know, we have to keep this performance in, in perspective as, uh, and keep working hard in training and, and moving forward as a group. And what, what do you take forward to next week? Obviously, top of club clash at home against Hartbury. Um, you know, things to work on and, you know, obviously, you know, Hartbury, Left Revivory go back a long way. So, um, you know, obviously, you'll be looking forward to that. You know all about the Left for Hartbury rivalry, Matt. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, as as you know, sort of pl playing down at Hartbury, is, it, I think what you see with Hartbury is they... They're very low on errors, so they they exert pressure very well on 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 teams. Um, and clearly, you know, we made too many errors tonight, and that would be punished if we took that into a game against Hartbury. So uh, we we just need to uh, sort that attacking contact out and uh, uh, just get our, our set piece a little bit more more consistent. And then we've got that platform that we need to uh, to play off and uh, and apply pressure and maintain pressure on, on an opposition. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much, Dave. We'll see you there next week Cheers. as it's on uh, the live stream. Thank thanks, you, Dave. Matt. Cheers. Thank thanks you. very much. Just a quick mic 
train. We're just going to have a chat with Chris Dover now, uh, the Cardiff Met coach. Hi, Chris. Uh, do obviously a bit disappointing. Very good first half, I thought, from your lad. Do you think um, potentially the, the force change it made from obviously the world under 20 has affected the uh, the team? Uh, yes and no. I mean, even at half time, if I'm honest with you, our half time talk was, was basically we're in it, but we felt the game was going to go one or two ways. Either we had to up things, you know, I felt even in the first half, things like our kick chase and first up tackling was poor. Um, we said at half time it's going to go one or two ways. Either we've got to up it and, and improve our performance or we're going to take a, you know, a big beat in. And unfortunately, it was the second of the two. Um, yeah, you miss key players, but for me, as opportunities then, players who come in. I've got to grab opportunities. I just thought tonight we our workload was carried by about two or three players, and a few other players were missing. So we're disappointed. You know, 36 points at home is a disappointing result in any game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we spoke in commentary. We thought the um, you know the defence was very courageous. There was some good hits going in, but obviously, you know, a few errors just invited more pressure. And you know, what what do you, what do you need to do about going away? And you know, obviously, individual errors are very hard to, to coach. Just basic skills and. Uh, individual you know, yeah, tournament. I think you know individual error we can look at that but I just felt Loughborough brought a lot more pace onto the ball tonight than we did we were very static even with our attack we tried to play but our attack was pretty static and pretty lateral we got to get more go forward into our game um, so how we can do that we look at you know perhaps use left for some examples tonight because I thought they did it really well they did bring pace onto the ball and asked big questions we defended hard you know we did keep them kept them out for long periods but uh, Ultimately, you don't want to be doing that. You know, no. we want to be better when we've got the ball, and uh, I think they found it pretty easy when we had the ball second half. Well, thanks very much, Chris. Thank you for uh, what was an exciting game to watch, and uh, all the best for the you know, next week and going forward. Thanks, Matt. Cheers. So, thanks, Chris. Okay. Thanks, guys. So uh, that's it all here from uh, Cardiff Matt at Concord Campus. Um, next week we'll be looking at the top of the table clash at Loughborough, uh, Loughborough versus Hartbury, both uh, victorious tonight. So we look forward to seeing you there next Wednesday at Loughborough University. Thank you, good night. It's hard work, but that's why, that's why you're here. We're just improving every week, and that, that's just great to see. We've got the potential there just to keep going hard, training hard every day, every session to just lift it that little bit more.
we've managed to create an environment where all the boys just love playing their rugby, love playing their sport, uh, no matter what level they are. And it's an environment where they can achieve their potential, again, not just on the rugby pitch, but within the classroom, and hopefully puts them in a good place for the rest of their life. To have someone like England here today, um, and for our boys to actually be invited to join in the session, um, is a real privilege for them. But it's also a huge accolade that Eddie Jones wants to bring them back here, you know, twice a year at the moment, so it's a, it's a huge thing. Yeah, it was Great experience, cool. obviously. Really good yeah. fun, yeah. Oh, it was so cool. I've seen these players on TV so much. They're literally gods. The philosophy of the rugby club is, is to enable these boys to be in an environment where they can fulfil their potential, not just within rugby, but within life. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. And it's a great vehicle and a great sport to do that.